<laughs> it's the first one! Come make those battle it out. This should be my worst enemy. Did I still eat it up? Yes. I work in the industry, so you understand that that's not how it works. <laughs> but still. I feel like you can't see me, but... <laughs> this is not a good system that I have going on right now, which is no system. Does that mean that I failed this? Welcome to another reading vlog, and this time we're doing or participating in uh, Spookopoly, uh, which is Becca's spooky version of Bookopoly, which is, a, again, a reading game uh, based on the game of Monopoly, and it is kind of translated into a reading game for our enjoyment. And enjoyment it gives. It's a very, very fun game. I would highly recommend you check it out. I will, of course, leave the link to the announcement down below. This time I am rolling as I go because I do genuinely prefer that way. I was setting the board up because um, this is my third time. It's like a third layer <laughs> on that board. And I did also do the first roll. First one! Ooh, but it does say that you can roll again and try and combine those two so you can kind of double up. And I might do that because it's just the first roll and it's too early in game and just in general. <laughs> the first prompt is pumpkin carving, which is a book with a face on. Okay, let's do another one. Please do not be a double. Okay, it is not. We have a four. Okay, future one is a looser prompt. So that actually works out in our favor. So we need a book that has a face on the cover and it's also like a rainy day book, which is like, you know, a book you kept on for future, set aside for, for the right time. So I feel like I need to go back a little bit and tell you why this book does fit the prompts. So the reason that I did that role before, also not now on the camera, is because I was, you know, washing my hair and whenever I do my hair, I really want to have like an active audiobook on. And I ran out of all of my audiobooks, so I was like, okay, let's just start the, <laughs> this book properly because I'm also a little bit behind schedule, which is totally fine. And this is the one that I want to explain because the face on the cover is easy. I'll show you the cover and there's a face on it, so I feel like we're gonna be able to agree on that one. <laughs> the other prom, you're gonna be like, this is a new release. What do you mean you've been saying? saving it. Well, so fun fact, I have actually read 15%, I think, five chapters of this in manuscript form a year ago. So I remember really enjoying the amount that I read, but I had to like turn to something else and I was not able to continue with this. So I mentally tapped it in my brain being like, I'm gonna come back to this when I have it. And now that I have it, we're gonna count it, basically. <laughs> the book is Long Live Evil. This is a fairy loot edition, so I'm just showing you the pizzazzling of it. Um, the end papers, the, the book and everything. A story about, I think, I think it's important to mention, actually, first of all, that um, the author is someone who had stage four cancer. It doesn't say what Type. So it's stage four cancer. And the author decided to write a main character and we start in a hospital, someone who, you know, um, is fighting. Um, I don't actually know if the character has cancer, but something, maybe cancer, something that is going to soon turn terminal as well. Also, they think the doctors. We start with her and her sister talking to each other about a fandom that the sister is really a big fan of and this main character kind of pretends to be a big fan of just so like uh, to appease the sister and it's like a fantasy series um and then one night a mysterious woman appears to her and um you know the main character is like i don't know if i just got the good drugs or, <laughs> or if this is actually happening but they say that they will give them a chance at life if they go into this fantasy series world managed to get this flower so they give them basically a quest there's you know a very healthy amount of skepticism until the character does wake up in the in in that fantasy series in one of the villainous characters body just kind of rejoices about you know experiencing life without pain which honestly would be a mood <laughs> would definitely be a mood whenever i when i did read initially that five chapters before um again because it was like a year ago i did restart this on audiobook um 
from the very beginning <laughs> just to kind of remember better but I did actually remember a fair amount but I I just really appreciated the kind of raw emotion or or you know even even the fact that the main character is so humor forward to me that is what I do when I have to push myself and mask myself from not being so much in pain in front of people that I don't want them to think about it or, or talk about it I just remember that reading that and really feeling that you know this is someone who's writing it from experience. <laughs> and it really spoke to me. I also am a big fan of that kind of Jumanji type of setting when you're sucked in into a fantasy world. I like the tone. It is a little bit confusing sometimes, but I actually have surpassed now where I was before. I think I am on like chapter seven or eight. So I am, I'm about here, like 80 pages or so in, and I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, I'm not like can't put it down and I'm going to find things to do so I can continue reading level of enjoying it. It's, it's a really fun thing to put on on the side with some heavy topics as a sprinkled in thing, but it, it isn't heavy, if that makes sense. Like the topics are themselves, but the way that it their approach is quite, uh, I wouldn't be scared of it, basically, is what I'm saying. So we'll see how it goes. And um, I did just get to the pit, to the bit where we get a little reveal that kind of spiced things up a little bit for the upcoming plot, I assume. So far, so good. But yeah, I'll let you know how I get on and I'm gonna skidoodle at the moment and I will update you. Hello, I am back from my work trip, hence why I sound like this. It's four days of heavy socializing. I didn't actually drink despite how I sound. It's just from speaking so much. I am on page 180. I know where I left off. I'm on page 180, Long Live Evil. And I have decided that I'm gonna try and come back to it another time, aka I'm currently DNFing it, which is such a shame. As I told you, there were some themes that I really enjoy. I, I love that there was the illness aspect of it, but I feel like that was such a tiny portion of it. Because I mainly was audiobooking this, I really just don't like how the, the man, the um, guard was voiced. It just, it really didn't, it just kind of, it it honestly was very detrimental to my enjoyment of the story, which is very annoying. It's not the book's fault itself, so I might retry it at some point purely physically. But then even outside of that, I feel like sometimes, like this seems like it should be such a simple, somewhat non-committal read, but I just, I can't help but get a little confused at times. I just don't know what's going on. The Some side motivations or like the smaller motivations other than the main, main goal is not entirely clear to me. I think I keep like zoning out. So I, and also it is the 14th and obviously I did have like a trip. We could discount like the last four days, but then it's the 10th, let's say. <laughs> a long time for me to sit on a singular book and it's clearly just not giving. If I'm not, you know, I'm reading something on the side granted but way more pull towards that read versus this one is just it's just a bit of a shame so I think I'm gonna move on before it puts me into a bigger slump I'm gonna listen to to my body and my brain and more so my activities and my um, time spent not reading and not picking this book up it is time we're gonna make that call I'm not going to punish myself for for the DNF I think there might have been a rule that you can you don't have to but you can do like an extra challenge if you do decide to DNF your current one I am not gonna because it again is the, the middle of the month and we're already going behind so it's gonna be it's gonna be fine we're just gonna continue before I continue I do want to say that yesterday when I came back Back, uh, me and Logan binged, literally binged, because I was like, I was so out of energy. I'm still riding on that like low energy train, but we watched Scavengers Rain. It's an animated kind of like Studio Ghibli, but on drugs, sci-fi. It reminded me a little bit of, sorry, The Sender, which is one of uh, my favorite comics, but I actually kind of forgotten about it because it was a while back. It's like, it's a little bit like that, mixed with Annihilation, mixed with Expanse a little bit. Overall, one of the best series I've seen in a very long time. Logan started watching it, watched like two and a half episodes, and then he was like, she's gonna love it. So he stopped and waited for me, which I'm thankful for. And then we restarted it, and I just watched the entire thing in one night. So good. Unfortunately, as all good sci-fi things, I want to say that the, it got cancelled, and there's not gonna be a second season, but it's still so worth the watch. And maybe someone eventually will pick it up. That would be fantastic. Oh, so good. So good. I do have the board here. It is, as you can see, 
dark um, so hopefully you can see enough of the board to follow what was happening but I am kind of like sad in the dark but you know what I'm tired and I like it so we're just gonna we're just gonna go with it as I said today is the 15th which means tomorrow is the 16th and me and Becca actually who hosts a couple of them, <laughs> both bought this kit for crochet along of this incredibly over the top blanket for Christmas. Will I actually make it? That's one, that's like, that's a different question. It will depend on so many things, on how I feel, on how I do, on how difficult it is, no idea. Uh, but that starts tomorrow and I'm actually quite buzzing. I'm buzzing about that. But that also means, mm, actually I don't know if I can crochet, it depends again on the difficulty of it and how intense the sections are, but if it isn't too bad, mm, we could really use an audiobook that actually captivates me. <laughs> So I am going to roll. It is so dark. I cannot see what I'm rolling. So that's not ideal. Okay, so I, I'm right here. Um, and we're gonna roll. What did we get? We got a one and a two. And a one and a two. Okay, so one and a two. A pole pick. Ooh, I get to let you guys pick. Hey, Momo, we've been to the vet today. He's not having a good day. I am actually curious about the Atlas of Us, so I could put that on. I could go for one of those. It is a bit more Halloween-y. I'm gonna put this on a pole, but I really feel like it's not gonna win. Weird genre. It's not very popular. I could put Orbital. I do want to read Rewitched, but I feel like this could probably fit quite a few other prompts, so I might keep it. I do want to read it this month though. Maybe the graveyard shift? I do need to read it, but I don't know if it's too soon. But I do need to, so that's a good shout. I could make those battle route. I could throw this in. Ooh, don't. <laughs> but this feels like it might need a bit more brain cells than I can afford today. <laughs> do you want to read the other Dracula one? So I might put that on as well. Pull. Off it goes. Hopefully we'll get a clear understanding like very early so I don't have to see. And I did not update you at all <laughs> yesterday. Um, I just got distracted and I didn't read at the end of it. But that does mean I get to show you results from a longer period of time. So it feels more legit. Although I want to say that very quickly it became very apparent <laughs> what, what is gonna win. Um, because it won with over half the points out of four options. So that's quite a, quite a thing I feel. So if you see right there, it says that the graveyard shift is the choice, which means that is what we're reading. Unfortunately though, I have heard that it is not the best, even from people who had higher expectations. I mean, I've, some people did enjoy it, so I have my hopes. However, I was really hoping to listen to this because apparently it has like a full cast with Spotify because it's such a, such a small one, I really didn't want to spend my credit on it. So I might just have to try and read this physically, which kind of makes me want to roll again for a different option because I do have stuff to do. Like I need to do cleaning, I need to do crocheting, uh, that I would really like an audiobook option. I could swap in between, but I would like to have an option. So I think we're gonna roll again and see what we get for that. Yes, I've decided, let's do that. And then I can I can read this alongside of it. I don't know if that's against the rules, but we're doing it. So I am on Holes. Let's see. That's a five and a one, not a double. Hurrah. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Blood. I'm gonna assume it might be something to do with color red. I was right. It is a book with a red cover. So just from these alone, the Scarlet Alchemist, Tempest of Tea. Ooh, Dowry of Blood. That could be a shout. Looking at more recent stuff. This is more orange. Let's, let's admit the defeat. <laughs> However, you know what definitely is red is this. Do I feel like it though? Is the question. It's a very specific. If it's like bunny, you do kind of have to focus quite a bit to make like any sense out of it. Tender is the flesh. I'm looking for like spookier reads as well. I'm not just pulling out like. Okay, I'm gonna go with this just because it is hard not to what the prompt is. A red cover and this is a book literally with the name Rouge, which is the color red, like blood red. So 
I feel like it really makes sense. This is deceptively short because once you actually open the book, the font is minuscule, which I guess explains why the audiobook is 14 hours, which is normally a much, much longer book, I feel. Because, um, for example, even though Tender is the Flesh, like, you know, it doesn't look that different half the time. Have the, literally half the time, I'm pretty sure it was like six, seven hours. So, but anyway, I'm gonna go with this because it's also on BookBeat, so I can actually just go on and listen without spending a credit. So I'm gonna do that, and because I'm on my lunch break, I think I'm gonna go clean and tidy a little bit, and whilst I do that, I can put this on and get it started. I'm gonna listen to this probably slow to begin with, and we'll see if we can speed it up to a comfortable extent. If we're going by Bunny, it's one that you kind of have to like actively listen to, so not ideal for what I was kind of hoping for currently, but maybe okay, because Bunny was also very unputdownable, so fingers crossed. Break down all the lights, let me hold you close I'm full of loose ends, will you be my role? Waited my whole life, and now I know Went for a little walk, got stuck here and the car does not even start um on top of that we have no reception i have no water and <laughs> well, we're not far away but like we're 40 minutes away from home so and i'm hungry and i'm the mic queen so all in all it's just great stuff happening hello welcome back i feel well, to you, it's been nothing, but to me, it actually has been a very long time since I've spoken to you. But in good news, I have now finished Rouge, and I don't really know exactly what to rate it, um, and I don't really know exactly how to describe it. So at its core, it is a big, big criticism and a viewpoint and an insight into the beauty standards and as well as a relationship with between a mother and a daughter and how that accidentally transfers between insecurities and whatnot. I would say that this one has made further into the fever dream <laughs> type of territory compared to Bunny and I feel like if you read Bunny and you think that oh wow, this takes it further into that territory, then you kind of get the idea of what we're, what we're dealing with here. Um, for a large portion of time, I also thought that it deals a lot with abuse, but I'm actually not 100% sure if it does, or if that was my interpretation of a certain element, because again, everything was a bit up for interpretation. As I would say for the biggest part of the book, probably up until like the last couple of pages. <laughs> this one has gone to me a little bit like this. So at the beginning I was completely thriving, it really pulled me out of the kind of slumping mood that I was in. On paper, if you know my reading style and likes and preferences, this should be my worst enemy, pretty much. Well, not quite, because I do love criticizing society and the norms and, and Black Mirror-esque style is my favorite, so on that level it makes sense why I gravitate towards this author. But on the other hand, I really dislike books not making sense for a long time and making you guess about stuff. I can deal to a certain extent, but when it is paired with purple prose, prose that I think can come across quite pretentious, that's when you kind of lose me. I would say 99% of the time, and this is maybe the 1% for me. I would, though, that being said, not recommend this book easily. I think I would recommend this book to a very particular type of person who I know have read similar things and liked. Otherwise, I would be quite hesitant to genuinely go out and put this uh, as a recommendation, especially also because I do think this drives up a very high rate of DNF. 
I think. I would be surprised if it doesn't and I could absolutely understand why it would. I've not actually checked or actually heard a lot of people read it yet because it is a fairly new release. So I don't know if that is just my assumptions, but if I were to make assumptions, which I clearly I'm doing, <laughs> that is what I would guess, is that it's going to be a big, a significant portion of people reading it and also DNFing it, especially towards the mid point or like even 60%. I will say the big, the middle part goes on and on and on and it is very repetitive. Not only is it repetitive, but we get crumbs to hold on to any type of sanity to then make that repetitiveness easy to swallow. Now, did I still eat it up? Yes. Would I have had a different experience where I was reading this physically and not through an audiobook. Most likely, I don't know how I would have fared. I would have gone one or the other way. I would either have completely consumed myself with this book and not put it down or even possibly DNF it. So it is a, it sits at a very, very odd spot for me. I would say that I preferred Bunny, but I'm also even more intrigued about All's Well now. It's difficult to set this up for a reader and say what the premise is because I feel like I either risk saying too much because this book does not say a lot while saying a lot, but it doesn't, you know, I feel like if you put out a, a certain point forward, that's pretty much the entire book and I don't want to do that. So I'll play it on the safe side and not say too much at all. Um, but at the same time, then I'm just saying nothing, which is, I, I understand it's not super helpful, but I think if you have read Bunny and then also really enjoy things like things that lean towards magical realism and being in a state where it's not only an unreliable narrator, but it's also thematically both repetitive and purposefully confusing, if you don't mind or even like inconsistent pacing, now this is where you can see where it really diverts from my personal taste because if you love this is how you win the time war or lose the time war, I can't remember now, perhaps to an extent, especially like the writing style, vibes, um, every heart a doorway, and then you generally quite enjoy Alice in Wonderlesk type of situation. This could be a good shout for you. Of course, this is a bit more gory and a little bit more bizarre. There is a big thing with Tom Cruise, of all things. Again, I would be so, so hesitant to recommend this to anyone who I don't know their personal taste on like a personal level, you know? And specifically would never recommend this book for someone who is just getting into the genre or fantasy. Well, it's not, well, magical realism or reading, because I think that this could have a very opposite <laughs> effect. <laughs> that being said, I liked it? Question mark? It wasn't, it wasn't bunny level to me. It's a bizarre book and I don't know how to rate it. It's definitely one of the books that also doesn't quite fit in a copile setup. Like I feel like this does not fit your standard breakdown as it is, but I will do my best and still try and see what that would result in. I also understand if the writing style would be a bit jarring for this. And again, as I said, I feel it can come across quite pretentious, but I also like the little plays on words and memory loss or almost said how I would interpret it, but then realized that probably is saying too much. It's weird because this is not a book that you can spoil plot wise. So the only spoiler I can think of is the meaning and the message. So I'm hesitant to speak about those things, which is annoying because you think, that's the fun part. But I am currently at the plot of Cop Island. There's very little plot to speak of. It came out as the three, but 3.5 if you count the fives. And I think that is reasonable. Again, this I recognize that this book is just not made to fit in the framework such as Cop Island because it doesn't quite follow your usual set up for a novel. Leave it at that for this, but I'm happy that I read it. Surprisingly, despite the fact that on paper this should have been something that genuinely put me in a slump, <laughs> it really pulled me out of it and it came to me at the time that I think I really needed it. That I finished that I could roll for another one, but I, I don't I don't like to play that way, so I want to go back and read the one that I was meant to read. But because I've heard that people who did enjoy it enjoy it mainly for, for the narration, it's like a full cast or something, so begrudgingly, very begrudgingly, considering that it is literally like a three and a half hour audiobook, I'm spending my credit on it on Audible and actually 
listening to it because I have way too much crochet to do to be able to sit and read physically because bitch works a full-time job and you know what sometimes I just don't have it in me or in my eyes to go and sit and read physically sometimes I love it and I crave it but a lot of the time I just want to go away from having to read stuff because <laughs> it's just tired but also I am and I made three squares in the last two days I think but I am still 11 books behind. It is almost November uh, for my cover project and it's almost November so people are going to be buying the yarn and the colors are gonna be sold out so I really need to catch on and wait for the colors to come back if they will be sold out in time for the end of the year so I don't know it just during the live stream because I did a live stream during that live stream the passage of time really has hit me hard <laughs> and I realized that I'm actually it's not that far from end of the year and I should not be this behind because this is the furthest I've gotten to the yearly um project and uh I'll be damned if I actually fail on this one I've invested too much time and money <laughs> in this to fail on this one so we gotta continue and for that I need to have an audiobook on not only that, but I've started the uh, crochet along for a ridiculously campy Christmas blanket. Today was also a release day for the next portion, which I'm also very tempted to just go and do that instead of catching up on the project for the reading, which is so annoying, but I'm so bad at when I get excited about a new thing, I'm really bad at just pushing myself out of that. Okay, I'm gonna go in skedoodle, but this is the update and I will let you know if I manage to read this and have enough time to roll again. It would be fun because I feel like we deserve an, uh, like one more, you know, at least. I stopped her from texting before. I'm not gonna lie to you, I kind of want my money back. Uh, first of all, I think I have already maybe discussed the fact that this was a daylight robbery for the size of it. I work in the industry so I understand that that's not how it works. <laughs> but still, I think perhaps this author is just not for me. But it's odd because I don't actually mind the writing style. I actually think some of the writing style bits were really nice. If it was any longer than this, I probably would have DNF'd. And it's so unfortunate because like, what do you mean? Let me just move you here so I can actually stand properly. Uh, with the author's note at the very beginning, I actually thought that that's gonna be quite an interesting take because I am someone who has in the past, I think, where's the wood? I need to knock on wood. <laughs> in the past, I have gone through some really prolonged, hard and difficult insomnia episodes so I'm not a stranger to the topic and I was actually quite excited to explore this now that I am not actively experiencing those or at least to not that extent. I do have another book uh, that's called Nod I want to say that I might pick it up because of this now it's reminding me of the topic and I kind of want to see it discussed differently. I will say I like I mean I, I get why that was a prefacing kind of word but I also think that it did not really focus on it enough to sell it as such. Maybe that's just me. Um, but I found this really lackluster. I couldn't tell you what the characters... I couldn't name the characters, do you know? I feel like for such a small um, like amount of pages, we really were ambitious with the amount of cast, I think, because, you know, we didn't have a lot of time to explore those. Maybe if we did, it would have gone better. I'm not quite sure. Plot also. So I basically feel like I didn't get anything from this book and I mean that in a sense that I didn't necessarily get enjoyment either. I'm not necessarily looking for every book to be life-changing and have a solid footprint in my mind, but I am looking to have something from it. This was background noise at best with some good writing sprinkled in. Um, so confusing on what to rate it, but I do not anticipate it being super high, which is really a shame. But I think in the book club, some people were really enjoying it. So it's not in that sense to me personally, it's a win because I obviously want people to enjoy the book. I am dreading the book club though, because I feel like they really didn't get along with the book because then it just makes the conversation like I'm, I, I am the Debbie Downer in it, you know, but I'm, I'm trying not to be so fingers crossed. But this one was not this was not a particular success, so I am going to make myself some lunch and we're gonna roll again to see what's next. Hopefully something... I've had semi-shit luck with these, I feel, you know, some of them was 
were better and then some of them were just really a struggle. Thankfully this one was short and I wouldn't have DNF this because I also have a book club. I would DNF if it is a book club but I am really not enjoying this of a book but because this was shorter it just felt quite silly. I think I may have learned my lesson and don't know if I would try this author's book again. I honestly just don't have anything very good to say about this. Okay. <laughs> so this is the first out of four uh, panels for the week of this. We're gonna have another one exactly like this and then another two in alternate colors. So lots to do. Okay, I need to kind of remember where I was. Blood. We were at blood because that was rouge. Yes, that, that rings a bell. Do I have hopes and dreams for this role? I'm not quite sure. I honestly don't know. I just want a good book, man. Okay, that is a five and a three. So one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. What is that? Bram Stoker. I feel like you can't see me, but <laughs> I can double check what it is. I want to say there's like an alternative route for those who don't want to read their book. Bram Stoker. The creator of Dracula. Read a book with vampires or read a book by Bram Stoker. I don't want to read a book by you at all. So I think it is book, book with vampires. Oh, I'll do my next. I have a perfect one because it's also a Dracula uh, take on Dracula. Continuation that what I started doing the magical readathon and this is the second volume and I really want to read that and it fits perfectly because it is an homage or guess or like a, a way to interpret Dracula so that's nice but I think because of that we're gonna do it again <laughs> we're gonna do a double roll oh my god Logan came back and just gave me a heart attack hello yes. <laughs> okay second roll then for an audiobook don't be a double oh my god it's the same roll I don't even know if it's maybe it's different dice for that roll but it's still five and three Okay, so one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna assume it's gonna be like a weapon or something. The bloodier side of spooky season. Ooh, it's not the weapon. True crime, thriller, and grim dark fantasy would fit very well for this prompt. This prompt is solely open to your own interpretation. Do we have true crime or thrillers? A thriller could be nice. A thriller could be nice. Do I have them? <laughs> is the question. I have something, surely. I really need to like log my books back onto Goodreads or Storygraph, whatever, so I can actually like see rather than having to like physically see because this is not a good system that I have going on right now, which is no system. Okay, I think I've decided to go with this. There's quite a few choices, but I want to go with something that I've gotten recently so I can get into like a, avoid the situation where I get the books and then don't read them for forever, which I know makes less sense <laughs> when you think of like, oh, all the other books that you got, isn't that what's happening? But whatever. Um, it also just sounds like a fun read. update you because I have actually finished Patricia Wants to Cuddle. The story is set through basically a bachelor type of game but it's you know it's called The Catch I think. The idea is the same we have one in this case rich man who is looking for a partner and he gets to decide who he keeps and who he doesn't and it's basically this world's equivalent of like Instagram creator. <laughs> He's just a douchebag. Honestly, there's nothing good about him at all, but we follow the contestants as well. One is a an influencer uh, who is like Christian and pushing faith to people and that is her primary kind of goal. Another one who just kind of wants to be with a guy. Um, a different one who is a different type of influencer, I think, and our kind of main character, kind of not. Woman that thinks that this is kind of pathetic, weirded out because she can, she feels like she cannot really judge because she is participating and she's just kind of like a little bit in a crisis mode about her life. And we go 
into the finale of this game and we are transported into onto this island because it was what fit the game's budget and we also have some crew members as well as characters. This island used to be a very popular location for tourists until a disappearance of a couple of women and since then it kind of got like a bad bad vibe and it was known to be like dangerous or whatnot. Uh, locals seem to be very happy with this game being hosted here thinking maybe the reputation can be restored but of course things like escalate. I will say I think this cover is much better choice and if you don't want to be spoiled for the entire quote-unquote reveal I guess. Do not look at the US cover. Uh, when I was checking some details on Goodreads I was shocked to see the cover of the US because it literally tells you what it is. What a shame! What, what a choice! I mean maybe it's not meant to be like a reveal but it doesn't have much going on for it otherwise. This is gonna be one of those books that I actually enjoyed throughout reading but I will absolutely immediately forget, I'm already on the way of forgetting, that I have read past that point. But I think that was the type of purpose I wanted from this book. I didn't expect it to be any type of life-altering, um, will always remember this type of work book. Uh, but it was a good company for when I was listening. It was good for like a spooky season as well. It's, I would say, in the nicest way, but I would say that it was mediocre through a lot of things. And it probably will score the lowest on logic that I've scored throughout the year. There are a lot of loose ends that I think did not make sense, not necessarily through the plot line, but even just the characters, a lot of personality switches and well, I'm sure they did make sense in the author's mind, but I feel like they left us out of the loop a little bit because some of the characters swapped and I can speculate why, but it was definitely not really well done in that sense. Uh, so it's a little bit of a shame because of that. I wouldn't go out of my way of recommending this to people, but I do think that it was a fun read in a sense that it was easy, it was quick, it was almost gossipy, but a little bit spooky because of the elements. I wouldn't say that the scary horror element or even the suspense element was extremely well done. Um, and then it really lacked in an explanation towards the end as well. I mean, we know what it is, but it also just, it, it did not linger. <laughs> on the entire reveal, which is an interesting choice. So overall, it's probably gonna be like a two, a three star. Unfortunately, I didn't read the second volume of uh, the Dracula one, so I don't know, does that mean that I failed this? I'm not quite sure. Um, I do still intend on it, but I want to finish this up and it, we already are in November, so I feel like we'll let it go. I've also moved on to a completely different read since all of this as well and I am now 250 pages in this chonker which is our um, November book club book with Patreons so you know it's, it's I have I have moved on <laughs> and it's our conclusion to the read-along that we had for the series which was the Greenbone saga. I feel like we're retiring this video and I'm retiring the project but I'm very excited for what's to come in November and then also December for Lightfall which uh, can confirm will be happening. But I hope you enjoyed this game. It's really, really fun. Thank you to Becca for creating it. It was really a blast uh, participating. I hope you had a lot of fun if you did as well. I'm a little bit behind on these, but I really wanted to shout out the people who joined the tiers of uh, Moon Watcher and above on my Patreon since May. <laughs> so we're backtracking a little bit, but I, I want to shout out these people by name. Um, I hope you, if you've been here for a little while, I hope you're really enjoying the space and I hope the Mooney community is bringing some joy or distractions or whatever you're looking for. And if you've just joined, welcome and also thank you. Okay, so hello and welcome to uh, Melanie, Liara, Kate, Maya, Caitlin, Katharina, Claudia, Caitlin, Alexandra, Yekaterina, Lindsay, Wendy, Nessa, Carrie, Rachel, or Raquel? Maybe Rachel. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure, sorry. Uh, Francesca, uh, Jamie, Vicky, Cassie, Marlena, and Daniela. Thank you so, 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 so much and um, hope you're having a good time there. Okay, and the last thing that I want to show you is the further progress in the Sirdar um, crochet along for this blanket. So I have that main square, right? Um, and then you might have seen me work on this palette. Then we have another one that's the exact same. And then I'll just put it here. <laughs> um, this one is also already with the next portion on top of it. So we're getting there. 
And this one still has yarn attached because I'm on the way of making this one. Um, so this is on this coloration, but these two will have light pink and dark pink candy cane rose, which I'm very excited for. Maybe I'll sit and uh, do a little bit more of crocheting today. I've been really enjoying just watching shows or watching movies. We've been really into movies recently, which is odd because uh, we're not, we're normally like very much TV show people. But we watched quite a lot of mo movies and Logan will just play his um, RuneScape original. <laughs> I feel like it's a very important distinction that I have to mention or uh, the offense will be taken um, on his phone. And I'm just crocheting and like from time to time, you know, like looking up and down. Um, it's just been a very kind of, it felt very self carey and I am enjoying that experience. But okay, I think I'm gonna try and stop uh, blabbering. I don't know how short or long this video has been, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I eternally appreciate you and I hope that these are entertaining and also company. Um, all right, before I just continue blabbering, I'm gonna go have a lovely evening or day or morning time zone. <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.